the Finance Committee meeting to order at 6.01 p.m. for the 27th of September. Um, first item on, well, um, we are all here present, so we don't need to do roll call vote. We can just vote on things that come along. And we do have a quorum. So first item on the agenda is minutes review and approval. Did everyone get the revised minutes? Corrected and when I jot them around, I think they were printed. Yeah. Yep. I move that uh, we approve the minutes, as, the revised minutes as submitted. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. All right. Next is updates from other meetings. There's a handout. Uh, <laughs> I have tried to, which looks like this. It says draft on it in huge letters because this is my take on all the meetings I've been to. <laughs> um, and it's probably not exactly right, but it's fairly close. So we'll give it a stab. Um, Let's start on the capital projects being discussed side. So, um, and most of this information is from the CCI meeting from last week or whatever. So capital projects, South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant upgrade um, is in progress and going well. Trevor, you can give a better update than I can. Yep, we, we have, um, we have signed the uh, change order for the just shy of $4 million to finish out that project or mostly finish out that project. Um, waiting for USDA's final, um, waiting for USDA's final approval on that change order and the structure of how the budgeting works and all, but that's kind of where we're at at the moment. And the project's moving along. I think we're 68% through production or through construction right now, doing very well, so. Okay. And from a financial perspective, most of that is covered with a USDA grant. The remainder will be a um, bond that we take out ourselves, yep. um, which will most likely be a 20 year loan. Um, and it is one quarter taxpayer, one uh, three quarters enterprise fund. Everybody knows that, I think. And the next object, the next topic is the new town park on Main Street which is being funded through CPA funding. Um, and this is old news. They did receive the grant. So it's 900 and some odd thousand for that grant. Um, and that is still under argument. <laughs> um, so Great way to put it. <laughs> it's, we'll see. Yep. Um, the next one is the town common revitalization. This was approved at the last town meeting for CPA funds. I, this is my memory, 350K. I didn't look it up, That's but it's right. somewhere around there. Um, <coughs> there is a plan. It is sort of on hold pending DOT, um, Massachusetts Department of Transportation input review resolution because DOT owns the most of the roads that surround the town common. So anything that we do to the crosswalks and everything has to get approved by them. And then there's also discussion about what's underneath the road and whether it needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. So that is sort of In hold. on hold as well. Yep. Leary Lot. Um, the select board decided to use ARPA funds for that out of the first tranche of money. Did I say that word right? So, yep. yep. Um, and um, that somewhere around 500,000. Yes. Is that what it was? Yep. Um, there is in your special town meeting packet in front of you, there is an article, I believe, for funding for engineering services for that. And then there is also a land swap um, that we are town owns a piece of property, Hanshaw Lunder piece, owns a piece of property. They're going to swap those, and that will enable the town to build a, an, like an exit road out of that lot so you can have one way travel around there. Um, and, there's, and we will talk about that when we get to the special town meeting more. Yep. Um, library expansion. Um, we were, everybody knows, we were. Um, approved for the MBLA or MBLC? MBLA. MBLC, sorry. So there's one correction oh. right thing. The MBLC grant, um, which is about 4 million. MLBC. MLBC. Oh, board of libraries. MBLC. MBLC. Okay. 
Um, so they did come back Sorry. with a new estimate for the total cost of the library at 12.3 million. Um, we have a, a grant for about 4 million and the, the library expects that they will raise um, at least $2 million in donations. I got uh, an update on fundraising by the library. They're up to 760,000 and uh, it was explained to me that they are not hitting the potential big donors until after the vote. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then there is the select board, I guess Tim Hilchey wrote the actual letter, but um, has written a letter to the powers that be in um, Massachusetts requesting ARPA funding to subsidize the, that library cost um, because of the radical increases in construction costs that have happened through COVID and everything. They have gotten their 12 towns total signatories to this letter. So it's not just Deerfield asking for more money. It is a group of 12 towns all in the same position. They've all received a grant or are about to or something and are requesting funding. So that is going forward. Who knows, you know, it, it's worth a shot. Sure. <laughs> and, um, and with 12 towns, it may, maybe it has, we'll get some recognition. Um, if that were to come through and to be funded at the full amount that we requested, that would be 4.3 million. Senior Community Center, right now they are out of the 1888 building. They have, they are, for a long time, everybody knows they've been renting space in the Catholic church in town for mm -hmm. their program space. They have also now rented space in Sunderland in that little building that used to be a bike shop and then was a tea shop, you know, right on 116. Um, so they're using that as office space and they're also able to like pass out, do the food program mm -hmm. from there and do some other, so some sort of program. stuff that doesn't take a ton of space program at, out of that space. So that is a very temporary solution and it is planned for, I think, the rest of this fiscal year yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, and then it is completely up in the air, but there's a possible temporary location, which will be the church building if we were able to you know, clean up and make the church building available for them by that and then there's a future permanent location needed and that needs to be decided and funded. Um, 1888 building refurbishment, um, the goal is to do this pretty much completely under CPA funding. There may be some ARPA funds from the second tranche of tranche, how do we say that, of ARPA funds um, available. Um, but I think select board has talked about it but hasn't decided for sure how much will be, if, if any, will be available for that building. Um, and then a grant request has been submitted for up to 400,000. Um, and that, that request yeah. is in, but we haven't heard back yet. So to, who knows? It is to, to um, if you flip over, it is to the Community One Stop. It's a state grant. Oh, that's the, um, the and it's, okay. yeah. Community one All right. Um, and the other, I guess the other update on that, that is we have hired an OPM and then we had design, uh, an RFQ for designer services out. We interviewed last night and the committee has selected um, a, a top contender, which we will present to select board tomorrow night. And assuming select board gives the approval, we will go forward and negotiate with them and have a designer on board who can work towards um, a solid cost estimate and design. It's probably the other way around, a solid design and cost <laughs> estimate for um, um, town meeting Great. and all the hoops that you jump through to get to that. So CPA and yeah. um, CIPC and blah, 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 all that. Great. Congregational church building refurbishment. This is very shaky in my mind, but mm -hmm. we have 150,000 that was approved at town meeting last year. We have DA who has agreed to do some in-kind support where they'll come and do the work. Um, that is on the fellowship hall side of the building. It's like a ramp mm -hmm. and handicapped bathrooms and mini splits. Um, that might be it. Yeah. Exit lighting, I don't know, something like that. Um, there is, um, a hundred thousand dollar earmark that Joe Comerford 
um, has designated for senior services, this is a little unclear in my mind too, senior services for Deerfield, Waitley, and Sunderland. The kind of, my understanding is the kind of intent for that was to help us with our housing the senior services problem. So that funding may be available to put towards getting the church in shape for that to be a temporary location. That is still totally under discussion with the select board and with the um, board of oversight and whatever. So that may or may not be actually available to you. Well, I mean, um, we've, we've got the earmark, we just- We have the earmark, we just don't know what we can do with it. <laughs> it is my, that, that's my take, I don't know. So, uh, um, and then there is a grant application in for another state grant that is designated towards underutilized building, which this certainly is, um, since it's empty and not being used at all. Um, but that is there, I think the status of that grant is that they're still working on that grant. They haven't submitted it yet, but they are working towards doing that. Old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, there is not a um, concrete plan for this yet. I think where we are right now is um, Tim Hilchey went and talked to the nonprofits um, and they have um, asked to go off and get their own estimate completely separate from what the town did for a wastewater treatment plant that would serve old Deerfield with the understanding that like there's no guarantee they're, they're going to get the estimate and present it and we may or may not go with it but it, it's that that's kind of the current status so the hope is that and my hope would be that it would come in at less than whatever the um price we have written down right now but that so, like are, that's completely at hand. are they basically proposing to sort of take on the job and since they're the i don't think so here? no because um all right this is totally in the my opinion area. Um, so it, this is whatever. Um, the town council has said that she, um, that this is like, if you take the EMS building, for example, they built the EMS building and then just gave us the building, right? So they could build it without, um, we can't do that with a wastewater treatment plant because it is so regulated that we would be buying into potentially not up to grade, whatever, not up to whatever service. Um, so it was kind of highly discouraged that we try anything in that realm. Um, and I, I, I just don't know the answer about where we are. There are, there's two articles on the warrant. One of them is redoing the sewer bylaws and the other is changing the home rule law is that what it's called um home rule. so the the law that says the town has to pay 25 percent and the um <coughs> at least 25 percent that is apparently not state law that is something that deerfield did in <coughs> and so there is one of the articles is to look at changing that And I don't know right now what the plan would be for um, like even if that's changed and it ends up being a hundred percent that that plant, the old Deerfield plant ends up being a hundred percent supported from enterprise fund. I don't know how the split would work. I don't know if it would put any additional burden on the people in South Deerfield who are, you know, because right now old Deerfield are folks are subsidizing the South Deerfield plant, right? Because the, the um, sewer rate's the same for the whole town. Um, so I don't know what the, um, I, I just, I don't know what he knows, but that, that's still very up in the air. Easy. Um, central, so, so that's like this big looming thing over us that we don't know the answer to, right? Um, Centralized geothermal, there is 
very familiar with this concept too, right? That there's the concept that they will put uh, a, a geothermal exchange field, essentially where the ball field is out here, and that would service the library and the church building and the 1888 building and this building. Um, and there are grants out there, um, fairly large grants out there to do geothermal projects. One of them is a <coughs> Department of Energy grant. Um, Tim Hilchey is kind of the lead on it from the town, but there you partner with a geothermal company, design company, and a geothermal installation company, and I don't know who else, but somebody who teaches um, how to do geothermals, like GCC or Franklin Tech or somebody like that. Um, the guy, there's a GEI consulting, is the company who is kind of taking the lead on writing the grant um, in conjunction with BERCOG. Um, and it's 250 to 750,000 in phase one, which is kind of the design phase. And then if you would go through phase one and end up with a design, you would go for the second um, phase, which is 2.5 million and up for the actual installation. Um, so that is out there as a possible concept. So all of these building projects um, are being, well, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but, uh, I, I guess the concept would be that you would build the building, you would design the building with the intent that either this geothermal will, will be ready once the building, you know, and be integrated with the building, or that the system you install would then be able to be essentially <coughs> retrofitted to the geothermal using that. Subsidized senior housing. I should pay better attention to this because I'm not going to be able to tell you, but there, there's some kind of study going on. They, they've done a survey um, and now they're doing a study looking at um, what the needs are and trying to come up with some sort of scope of the senior housing project. There was a grant received to cover that study. Um, it did not cover the entire cost of the study, so there is a special town meeting warrant article to cover the rest of the funds for that study. That would be the four thousand dollars article. Yep. Yep. Any questions on all of that? All right. Back side of the page, I've also been trying to get my mind around because everybody and their brother is writing a grant. And um, every time you turn around, I'm like, oh, there's a grant for that, and whatever. So, and I, I don't, I don't have a good soup, we feel. Have to have our bowls out. Huh? If it's raining soup, we have to have our bowls out. There you go. Um, and so, this, just like the other side, has big draft written on it because there's, I'm sure there's mistakes on here, but this is my understanding at the moment. So we have received a complete neighborhoods grant that is a joint grant with seven communities, 240,000 total. So the hope is that they'll divide it evenly among the communities and we'll get 40,000. That was, this is the grant that we were talking about doing landscaping around the buildings. Apparently that is not um, an acceptable use of the grant. The grant is geared towards something. What I wrote down was cluster housing and environmental transportation who knows if that's actually what it's for, but it's something along those lines. That was my note during the yeah. meeting. Environmental transportation. <clears throat> electric electric buses? <laughs> I don't know. Hoverboards. There you go. Mm -hmm. Bike lanes. <laughs> so, so I don't know the details of that. And De Denise, there's been one meeting and Denise went to it and I, I, I'm not sure I heard an update since No, she's meeting. been away, so I think. It's a little... Um, so hopefully we'll have a clearer description of that. There's the earmark, which I already described. There's the shared streets and spaces, um, which is a grant we received a while back that is for beacons and crosswalks like by Frontier and yep. up by the new park. 
Um, and then community one stop, I already mentioned, this is a state grant up to $400,000 that is designated towards the 1888 building repairs. So those have all been submitted and some of them have been awarded. The right hand side in progress stuff. So there's the DOE geothermal grant, which I already mentioned. Um, there's the underutilized buildings grant, which is targeted towards the church building refurbishment. That's up to 200,000. There is a community compact cabinet grant, which is for regionalization and efficiency. It is, it's not building related, it's people. So it's looking at the administration of the town and the roles of the people in the town and how that can be made more efficient. Um, it is the application that we're submitting is DEI related, but also administrative roles related and looking at who does what and how that could be redone. Could you unpack DEI? Yeah, what is that? Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Oh, sorry. The next one, I lost the bubble on this. I don't even know what it's called. I think it's another community compact cabinet, but I couldn't find it online, but it's something to do with energy efficiency and renewal exchange. It is a um, state grant. And if, uh, if we applied to it, it would be towards the geothermal project or is something in that area. Green communities or? I thought green communities was looking at something recently, but I can't remember what they were gonna do. But I, but I don't think that's what you had for a bubble. I was just thinking about that. Green, so there's another one that's green. Yeah, uh, I, I can't remember who was working. I know uh, energy, uh, the energy committee was looking into that and they have the solar field, the solar one. Oh, thank you. Yep. Okay, for solar. Oh, good. Hi, Carolyn. Am I even getting close to any of this? <laughs> you are. Okay, and the last one is um, Jim McGovern came and toured when he was here. He was very impressed with the whole campus plan and said something about a possible earmark um, and that earmark would be in the $3 million range, but that's not short term. That would be like next year yeah. or sometime. Yes, um, we start the process as soon as we know what the election results are, then we'll start the process um, of of submitting for an earmark and we can probably get one from Marky and um or he volunteered to help us get one from Marky and Elizabeth Warren too. It seems like three million is about what the earmarks are maximized without real a huge amount of scrutiny. So the only other thing I wrote down from the um CCI meeting was that the Open space committee, that's the word I'm looking for, is working, they are working in uh, a new open space plan. Um, they are getting close to wrapping that up and they are putting their action items together and are um, looking for input on that, but that is getting close to being done. That's the plan on bike and hiking and walking paths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yep. Um, and then um, for the planning board, they have updated and simplified their fee schedule and gotten like um, kudos for doing that, for the, the, especially for the simplification part of it. Um, and uh, they are also working on accessory apartment bylaws. You're on that committee, right? Um, yeah, so we have not done a whole lot since our last meeting, um, Ms. Wolfgang probably. Oh, finally. <laughs> uh, yeah, hi. Um, thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, uh, we're continuing. I mean, this is sort of the Pandora's box that every little, not every, but so many small details really do have a lot of big implications. So there still are a few that we're um, working through, possibly, you know, and then. Um, maybe the next step would be public hearings and talking with the committee again. Thanks. Um, and that is finally it, I think, on the CCI update. Um, too bad uh, personnel is Dave and he's not here. Anybody else been to any meetings that they feel like updating? No, good, all right. You've been all the way back. Phew. That's done. Special town meeting warrant article review. 
So here's my suggestion. Um, you have in front of you the hot off the press updated warrant list of warrant articles. When I talked to Casey this morning, there weren't any dollar values in here. There are dollar values in here now. But my suggestion is that we run through these at breakneck speed, just saying like, this is what this is for, kind of that level. Everybody takes it home, <coughs> reads it. Once we get the final copy from Casey after the select board has approved it tomorrow night, then we'll have a final copy and we meet next Tuesday and review as many of them as we can. Does next Tuesday evening work for people? Uh, I'll be away. You'll be away. Anybody Depending else? on, well, I have jury duty that day. So I oh, either can dear. make it or I can't make it. <laughs> I won't know until. Hmm. I would Jesus. assume you'd be done well, by five. Yeah, I mean, it depends on when you start. Might be a long day for you, but you can't make that. Well, shoot, we don't have a quorum number, I don't think. I don't know when Dave's coming back. Thursday would be here. I do not. Monday. Thursday would definitely work for me. So if we don't do it till Thursday, well, Monday. Then... So if we don't do it till Thursday, probably our recommendations will not make the posted one. That's not good. Yeah, well, I mean, if it has to be Monday, I guess I can. What's, what's, what's the deadline on? I could also meet again this week. If that, what? If that helps. Yeah. What's the no? It's deadline? 14 days before. I think Casey said she wanted to post it on the 5th. On the 5th. Yeah, yeah. We, we would have to, we would have had to post that meeting today if we were going to do it Thursday. Oh. Um, you can do a meeting on Friday, night, I think. think. We're going to what? I think we're going to need more than one meeting. Probably. What, what about Monday the 3rd? Is that? If we have to, I guess I can have that. Yeah. What about I this have week? a conflict mm. Monday. You have a conflict Monday. OK. Um, what about so this Friday the 30th? I can do this Friday. At what time? I can do Friday. I could start as early as 5.30. We might want to do that at Treehouse. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's where I am on Friday afternoons. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I can meet that. We, we don't, yeah, we don't usually meet on Fridays. No. Well, there's no reason we can't, right? Right. Um, well, people not being able to attend. Yeah, we can. If, if that works for people, I can make that work. And adjourn to three hours. <laughs> there we go. We're probably nearly over. We're probably over. 5 30 on the 30th. That would work for me. So we'll have to post that tomorrow. Works for me. All right. Maybe, maybe we should schedule another one too because we're going to need it. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Probably. You can get your COVID shots on the way to town hall. And then the following week, I can do any but day except Monday. 5 30? On the 30th? On the 30th. 5 30? 5 30 on the 30th. Does that everybody do that? Yep. Works for me. Okay. Yeah, sure. Soon we start, soon we finish. All right. 5 30 on the 30th. And then the following week, I can do any day except Monday in the evening. Um, I am also not available Wednesday because that's the library today. Okay. How about Saturday? Saturday. No. <laughs> I, I no, can... I, I actually can't do okay. Saturday. That's a bunch of stuff. So Throwing it out for discussion. Besides, wouldn't that like require paying Alex overtime or something? Hmm? Wouldn't that require paying Alex overtime or something? Uh, if, if you want to meet on Saturday, I'll meet on Saturday. I have no problem with that. Just let me know a little bit in advance. I, I could do Saturday. I suppose. I'm not sure. 
it could be Saturday afternoon if we want to do that. Like, are they trying to do like the first? Yes. Yep. Okay. Just making sure I was on the right day because <laughs> bounce around. Okay. You guys want to do Saturday? Oh, we have a conflict on Saturday evening. I just don't want to, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Saturday I, evening, I have a hard conflict. Um, the rest of the day, yeah, I can do. What time? I wouldn't be able to get started until like 3.30 on Saturday, if we do Saturday. Same. Yeah. What's it, what do you need for a reading break? So if we did 3.30 on Saturday and we ended by 5, okay, that's, that's that. That works for me. So that's Saturday the 1st, so we're meeting back to back days. The yep. I don't know that that was one that we did. No, we do the uh, Let's see how much of the one I have is there. Oh my gosh. Is that, Brenda, can you do Saturday? I, you Friday? know what? I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to just say I might not be there. Okay. Is AC Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's Once say again, we're getting the warrant last minute. minute. <laughs> yeah. What was this? Right. History of this, For this meeting. Yeah. Another Friday, yes. Saturday, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. All right. So. Should introduce the change to the bylaws pushing back the submission. I'm not joking. Yeah. I agree. It's a problem. It, it, yeah. it's it just, Happens every year. Yeah, every year. You're right. All right. So everybody has a copy in front of them. And so what can we conclude? We're going to shoot for five thirty on Friday the thirtieth, and then three thirty on Saturday the first. If we decide between now and Friday that Saturday doesn't work, we will figure out on Friday when we're going to wrap it up, and if it doesn't get posted that's fine because we still we, we will still give our it's nicer if it gets posted but we'll still give our opinion at the so at the, the meeting the third so. 5 30. the 30th at 5 30 oh. september 30th at 5 30 oh. october 1st at 3 30. Just it'll be easy, it'll be so far. Yeah, so far. Three thirty Saturday, <laughs> five thirty <I'm> Friday, <laughs> and we'll send it out by email. All right. <coughs> so, Article One. I, I think you can skip over article one. Um, we received uh, MVP grant money in excess of what we spent out of that fund. And when I saw this tonight, I said to Casey, why aren't we just paying for this out of the grant fund? She thought that was a good idea. So I think we're gonna skip article one. I, I don't know that for sure, but there's a good reason to, to not worry about that out of the general okay. fund. Article two is more money for contracted services because of all the grant writing that is going well, on. Well, actually, so can I, can I explain? Yeah, this? go for it. Okay. Uh, Casey, jump in there if you need to, if she's there. She's not up there. Okay. Should we go in and see if she wants to participate? Do you want me to get her? Sure. So in the meantime, I'll just speak to it. Um, okay. The engineering services for the Leary lot, which would have been paid out of the ARPA funds, is um, really onerously controlled by the federal government and will put undue 
um, burden on the town for all of the requirements that they insist upon. So our CPA's suggestion was that most towns will pay for the engineering services out of their contracted services or another account in, in their um, general fund. So I believe Casey has a, an estimate of 50 to 55,000 for the engineering services. And then um, I think the additional amount that she was requesting is for uh, grant writing services. We do have 25,000 in that fund for grant writing, but there are, as you know, so many grant opportunities that we're thinking that we need to um, uh, have somebody on board more than what we're what we're anticipating or what we were initially anticipating for doing that. Okay. Um, do you want to just talk through each one? You're probably more familiar with them than I. Am. Well, I, this is the first time I've seen these. <laughs> But okay. I, I, I mean, we've been talking about some of them. So Article 3 um, went through the numbers today. If we were to increase the um, assistance, the um, executive assistance position to 19 hours a week, we had budgeted, I believe, for eight. And that's Alex right now. So all of the extra work that he does. But um, as you know, he's now filling in as assistant town administrator. So that's kind of a... But um, is Casey on? Yeah, I was going to say, Casey, you need to on. jump in if you need to. Um, but uh, the amount of work in that office is is extreme. It's it's really extreme. And in order to support um, the select board better, the that part time position needs to be brought up to nineteen hours. And then we have some um, assistant town administrator candidates that we've interviewed. We've got some great candidates um, in the works for that and hopefully anticipating hiring that person sometime in the next month. So we just kind of went through all the numbers and figured for transparency sake, we would probably be 5,000, less than 5,000, but up to 5,000 over for the year. So instead of asking for a reserve fund transfer, we wanted to make it transparent to the town that we're talking about needing additional time in that office, which will affect next year's budget um, going forward. Okay. Thanks. So um, with us not having an assistant town administrator for a little while, does that offset any of these costs? It does, okay. which is why we're only asking for, for 5,000. Right? The okay. numbers came out much better than we'd anticipated. I did kind of a, a, a an exact analysis as best as I could. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, yes. Maybe I, if these are no brainers, can we vote on them? Yeah, sure. Get them out of um, the way. I, this may not be the final, but the the, the it may not be the final wording, but the mm -hmm. gist of everything is there. So mm -hmm. if you want to go back and and. I think we can get some of them out of the way, like okay, Article 1 sure. for $428. I vote yes. So of course, Article 1 is maybe moot point. Anyway, oh, we're so. hoping that that one's going to be taken off yeah. of here. Yeah. So, I have just a thought. We can provisionally yeah. approve it. I mean, yeah. I, I, All right. I, I think let's back up nice. and start over. So, Article 1, let's, we might as well go ahead and vote it. And then, okay. if it gets taken off, that's yeah. fine. And, and if it done. doesn't, then and we, we will have gone through it. We can so. decide. To Great. All right. Later. So, we have a motion. Uh, I move that we approve that we recommend the expenditure. Is it four hundred twenty-eight? Yes. Yes. Uh, to uh, for the um, vulnerability preparedness project. MVP. Yep. Second. So this is a bill from the last fiscal year, which is required. Why it requires a nine tenths vote from the town. Right. If we're yep. paying from the general fund, correct. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. All right. Article two, the sixty thousand. Um, do we want a better description of what that's actually for? I'd like to wait on that one myself. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Okay. Article three, the extra nineteen hours for Alex and the increased APA. I make a motion to approve Article Three to provide five thousand be added to the select board staff salaries. 
Second. Okay. Any discussion? Would anybody be happier waiting or are we happy? Is this going to lead to another part time salary line going forward? I don't know. No. Uh, so right now, Alex is scheduled for eight hours a week. We're talking about just changing his hours to up to 19 hours a week so that he's better able to assist the department. Right. Does that keep him unbenefited? Is that? Yeah, I assume, I don't know, we were just, uh, Casey knows more than I do. I, I just but did I mean, the calculations. I mean, this is going to be a permanent change in the number of hours. Week. Correct, so that's correct. Changing a, I don't know how much. Semi-part-time to more of a part-time. Doubling the cost of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, do, do we know what it would cost going forward then? Not not just the five thousand dollar increase, but you know what it would be, you know beyond. I don't know that number. Year. I wouldn't have that off the top of my head. Okay, so maybe we hold off until we know what that number is. I would like to wait until mm -hmm. next week on this one. Okay, um, I didn't bring my budget book either, so Fine. I can't look yeah. at it and okay. see what yep. is in there. Okay, I move that we table that. Okay. okay. <coughs> so. <coughs> Oh, there she is. Yeah. Next. Okay. So, Article Four. It's yeah, to provide a sum of money. I think we have to do administrative stuff. So, do you want to withdraw the motion? Oh, got yeah. it. Or do you want to? Oh, number three. Oh, number three. I'll withdraw the motion. Okay. Okay. Good. Then we'll move on. We're ready okay. for Article Four now. So, Article Four. This is to pay the accrued fees and and um, late fees and interest for the past unemployment claims to the DUA. Um, back before my time, um, there was an issue where we didn't pay our unemployment claims for a number of years, um, due to, um, I think it was a computer issue where yeah. accounts changed and no one saw that we were accruing all this late stuff. Right. And so at the time, apparently they went to town meeting and they were able to, um, get the town agreed to paying the late unemployment claims, but yeah. not the late fees and the interest. And that has just continued to accumulate and continue to accumulate through the years and it isn't ever going to go away until we do something about it. Um, yeah. I believe the fees right now have got to be close to $25,000. Yeah, they were, I, I don't know the they exact were amount. 15 to 16 when when Barb, I think that was a balance, the old balance left in 2013 was um, approximately 15 to 16,000. And then, so, and they've been taking some of that old money and paying new money and paying old bills. It's getting really complicated and confusing so we really need to clean it up um it takes a lot casey's been working on talking with them which is not super easy because the accounts are old so right this has been going on for 10 years yeah so almost 10 years yeah so my recollection i was here but i didn't work on it when mary and bernie worked on this back in 2013 i think we appropriate they appropriated a certain amount to pay down the claims themselves and I don't know if they were going to request relief from the interest and fees or not, but I know they didn't get paid. So one of the things that Barb brought us brought to our attention, we would have dealt, we were going to try to deal with anyway. But when when Barb resigned, we didn't we checked the account, but it wasn't we weren't ready to do anything with it for annual town meeting. And now it turns out we need to have more information by logging into the account. I can't get a number this week. I'm hoping to be able to get a number for the motions. Um, but we do know that what it is affecting is payments that we're getting are going toward those interest and fees and not necessarily, or payments that we're making are going towards the interest and fees, not necessarily the recent claims. So we have to address it so we can settle that and be up, be up to date on our other unemployment requests. Is there a, um, you know the interest rate? I don't. I think some of that information is in the unemployment. Um, what do they call Facts, it? Uh, the, the unemployment login that we have through the state. I think some of those facts are there. 
but I don't have login to get, I don't have the ability to get into the account. I have to wait till Sarah gets back so that and she's on vacation. I have to wait until Sarah gets back because we have to figure out how to get them to give us information. I did talk to somebody at DUA today. Um, and really the advice was log into the account. You can probably do the calculations. I'm guessing I'll find out what the interest rate is. Can we table this until we get that info? Yeah. Certainly, yeah. you know, my suggestion would be is why don't we table it? If, if it isn't ready for the warrant, you guys can also discuss this when you see motions because we'll start working on motions relative to the um, oh, Was there some kind of audit of all of the accounts done when like associated with the turnover of the treasurer or anything like that? Like no. how do we know there's nothing else out there? Like oh, this? there's probably a few things. Oh, I don't, I don't think so. No, so, we went through all of it when Barb left. She left us a list of like three items to fix. And I think we took care of a couple of them at annual town meeting. And then this was, it was like an unpaid bill or something like that. And then this was the main This was the main one issue. of the major issues. Financial issues. No, there's other stuff we're working on. Other didn't pick up on it. Tom wouldn't necessarily see this particular item. I'm sure he was aware of it, but it's not um, material in their review of things. Okay. Um, I think we should wait till next week. Yeah. What's that? We're supposed to take a non cast vote. I don't know because it's. It is, it is. It's, a pre, it's, it's, a, it's an accruing, but it's also an accruing bill. It is, but most of it is, is prior year, prior yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I could. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to go back to either two or three <coughs> cases here, or would you rather keep moving forward? Either way is fine. Let's right keep moving forward. What's that? Let's keep, keep moving, moving forward. forward. Okay. Um, article five. So article five is in reference to the fact that we just found out a month ago mm -hmm. that we have three students going to Smith Hope. Two weeks ago. Two. Um, yeah. Literally a couple days before school starts. Right. So we need to um, come up with some money to pay for the third student. For transportation, and I sent you're going to see an email in your inboxes. I blind carbon copied you on basically the email to Dan Lisa. Uh, I didn't copy you, and I forgot. I'm sorry. Um, okay. I'm on no, it's not that. I'm <laughs> just trying to get the email written. So I, I actually went through and I outlined the intent of each one of the articles, but for this, we don't have the tuition costs and the transportation finalized. If I get that final number, I intend to put it in. If not, we'll put it in for the motion. But it's the but, cost for a student, special education, and usually, and, and, the, transportation. and the transportation. So, so we're, we're most likely looking at 30, 30,000, around 30,000. For one student. Well, for one student. It's, it'll be at least 20,000 for just the tuition. And then we have potential special education costs and the transportation. We have to pay the total amount of special education. It's not, it used to be a sort of a flat rate. Now the schools can charge the entire amount. So we never know exactly what it's going to be. So this person isn't going to be at Frontier. No. No. <laughs> this person a discount on the sped at Frontier if we have one less student there. Nope. James is ready to get his Uber going again. I can see, I can see the wheels turning. Three of them. I mean, we can just buy them. Yeah. Article six. I'd like to. Can I discuss that? Yeah. Without a motion. Like, how much have we? raised and appropriated so far for the 350th anniversary celebration and is there a budget for it well i don't know i have not seen a budget um there i want to say that we have allocated the town has appropriated thirty thousand to 
to the 350. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah, we did 10 a so year. So that's what we have so far. That's what we have so yeah. far. And then, and then Friends of Deerfield is also raising money uh, for it as well. I think they're up to over 20,000. We have a we have a budget of a hundred thousand. That um, seems to be what other towns have been. Um, it seems to be the average of what other towns are doing. So our budget has always been a hundred thousand, John. Thank you. So if we agree with a hundred thousand, then I guess we have to agree to raise thirty thousand, right? Or well. No, I, I, the friends of Deerfield will be raising money. They have already raised 23,000. This is September for next year. But what is making people nervous is the Jubilee in, on December 31st was supposed to be a fundraiser, which would have raised another 10 or 15,000. It looks like it's going to be break even because um, Deerfield Academy has volunteered their facility, but um, we've had to rent plates, we've had to rent linens, we've, you know, had the caterer can't use the kitchen. If it snows, we have to shovel the snow ourselves. It is not any subsidy of any kind. So um, it's more going to be, they'll still make money, I think, raise some money off of that. But that was one of the first fundraisers of the 2023 year. And now that is more of a break even thing. And we have the parade. Um, is the the Sunderland's budget was sixty five thousand? Waitley's budget was sixty, and we have a budget of sixty for the parade, um, which will happen in June. And the fireworks is um, Sunderland was eight thousand, and Waitley was ten thousand. So we have a budget of ten. So we're a little nervous that you know. We need. We might have to have that money ahead of time, before the July first, um, you know, budget year it, town meeting. So that's why it's on this year, you know, the special town meeting right now. Carolyn, do you do you guys have a written out budget that um, we could get a copy of? Sure. We've we. It's it's just an estimated budget because we don't know exactly um, where, you know, the as far as the parade, we don't know if we're gonna pay for mummers or Shriners or the fife and drum or bagpipes, all those kind of um, special kind of features cost money. So that hasn't been 100% nailed down yet, but we certainly can give you all the information that we have. We've been meeting for three years now. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're pretty, we have pretty, Solid information from surrounding towns, Hatfield, Waitley, Sunderland, um, Northfield, Westfield. We, we've we talked to everybody and we have all their information. So we're, we feel pretty solid about the 100,000. And then, like I said, I feel confident the Deerfield, Friends of Deerfield will come forward and then the money would just roll over to free cash if we didn't use it. We would obviously spend donated money first. It's just... Everyone's a little nervous because of the Jubilee not not really generating as much cash on schedule as what we had planned. Is there a target fundraising fundraising value? Well, the friends of, I'm not part of the Friends of Deerfield, so um, we we probably could get a report from like Chris Harris, but they've always talked about raising between 100 and 150 thousand. And the idea was to raise as much as possible because they wanted to seed the 400th celebration, which so that we weren't ever starting out at zero again. Okay. I've gotten, uh, I believe it was a 10,000 donation from Greenfield Savings Bank um, just recently. So I'm not sure what the total, what the running total is. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got. Uh, but yes, the big problem is that the jubilee was the, the, the gala was planned to be a fundraiser, and now it's turning into a Breaking. an event rather than a fundraiser. Yeah, that's what made people nervous. This was this just came out of our meeting last night. Um, everyone was just a little concerned 
That's all. We just wanted the safety net of this. Doesn't mean that we'll spend it, but we wanted the safety net there in case we had to send, you know, deposits or whatever. So if there's the intent to save funds, save leftover money for the 400. Of donated money, not, not town money. Yeah, but, but there was also, somebody said that um, we would spend the donated money first before this appropriated money. Yes, that's true. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're required to put it back into free cash if we haven't spent it by the end of the, uh, the year of the celebration. But I don't quote me, I don't know for sure. But I'm pretty sure it's at free cash. Well, we would because there's not, we don't want to hold over town money. It would, would just revert back to free cash. Yeah, I, I think the but, idea of the yeah. Friends of Deerfield seeding money for the 400s was that it would be in as in their nonprofit character. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> if they raise more than our expenses for this year. Right. But I'm not sure that's going to so if they raise, so say they raise a hundred thousand, and the whole thing costs a hundred thousand, then we, then we wouldn't spend any town money. Okay, and if they raise one hundred twenty thousand and it costs a hundred thousand, we would spend all their money, and the twenty thousand would be saved for. The it would yes, we we would have to. We'd have to change. We'd have to talk with Brenda and the state to figure out what fund you could seed it towards. But one of the things we had thought about was, you know, we're doing the celebratory. Um, the 300th was really focused on the colonial part of Deerfield's history. This part is really focused on the immigration story of people in town. So we're doing all the history stories. We have um, Peter Thomas has multiple history events that you know he's donating him you know his time um about different aspects of the immigration story and then we'll have these um stories that are um, being taped all that kind of stuff the archiving of it all that stuff is being done through pvma and will be but one of the things that we thought if we had if the friends of deerfield had extra money was we would continue to interview people and we would continue to archive, update the archives and do regular, regular, you know, instead of waiting for the 400th, do, you know, another decade, 360, whatever, some kind of program that would continue the person um, interviews and activities that um, people have come up with. Um, that was just one of the suggestions. It, in other words, it would, you would not just wait till the 400th, you would come up with some kind of um, programming through the years that would tie in the celebration of the 350th to the 400. I mean, there's several different ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go back to finances though. Is there, do y'all feel like we have enough information? Do we wanna wait on getting some sort of a budget if we have enough? Anybody want to make a motion? Let's let it wait. percolate. Let's wait if we're. Let's wait. We can't seem to make up our right. minds. So. Next is um, sewer and waste. Oh, this is the truck. This is the truck. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Anybody want to? Yeah. Okay. So, do I make a motion so we can start discussion? <laughs> or, sure. Go ahead. Okay. I make a motion to approve the. I, you know what? We're not going to be able to vote this one yet. I don't think. I have a couple of questions. Okay. I'm just going to give you the I'll story. Okay. That but, Casey told me earlier. We can talk about it if we're not voting. Yeah. We don't need a motion. Yeah. We it's can talk about it. You have a document to refer. To. Um, so not a motion. Just a yeah. discussion. My questions? Or do you want to talk? Go ahead, I'll do my Is best right now. Has CIPC approved it? No, it just went to CIPC. There were two capital requests that I had to work on. So I sent, I had one completed 
I had a revision I had to make um, from Kevin's initial draft. And then I have a draft one for another item on this warrant. So I sent them out um, later this afternoon because I couldn't get to it until later this afternoon. But the board still has to talk about the second item. Um, so that's what I sent to, I blind carbon copied the capital. So with the intent to have them set up a meeting and go through a review of it, um, if we can't get to a decision by town meeting, at least we've started the process. I'm hoping that we can do that. So Mark and I are gonna talk about that. Um, why do we, don't they have a current vehicle? No. They don't. I thought there was discussion a few years ago about there was discussion, my but understanding. No vehicle. And I, I thought that they were for a short period of time using a truck that was dedicated to the highway, but they have- um, It's been turned away. It's been it's, salvaged it's been or something. It's been pulled back or, well, that's yeah. right, yeah. All right. Then, yeah. There's no vehicle. If it's just a, a, I read an email about the request and it talks about tra it's just needed to transfer people from one Right. Why do we need a forty thousand dollar truck because to give people a ride from one plant to another? Why don't they buy a used car for five thousand dollars? Because you may end up spending. So, from a used car perspective, you may end up spending more keeping that car up rather than you than buying a new truck and having it last for ten years. The reason, and I'm that's just conjecture on my part. That's a usual. That's what I would think about. Yeah. But the reason the request has come through is because we've been made aware of the fact that there's the potential to transfer hazardous materials to a person's regular vehicle and possibly contaminate that and have other people interact with that because it's their personal vehicle. It's actually a public well, safety question. I have no question. problem with yeah. them, the I, town purchasing a vehicle. I, think it would I just don't think we need a $40,000 truck. I don't know I if you can get a truck for much cheaper than 40 k No. Yeah. Yeah. Not right now. Yeah, that's so, a, that's a hard a estimate. Yeah, I think if we need we a truck for transferring equipment. And, and, yeah, it's um, more than just people. Materials. It's all yeah. sorts of things. Thank you. Mark. Between the two waste wastewater treatment facilities, yeah. What about a used truck? Uh, those are made. I mean, you're not going to put that many those miles. Those are actually on it. more expensive than new cars. You're not going to put a used truck is going to be cheaper than a new truck. I can't. If not you can necessarily. Find it. Yeah. If you yeah, can if you find, find it. it, that may be true. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is inventory. So I will tell you that my understanding from the quote that I got from Kevin was this is in existence and available if we vote the money. Um, it's a little bit dicier, especially with other types of vehicles. I know the police departments are having trouble mm -hmm. finding vehicles as it is. Finding a used one might not be, we might not have that availability. They're actually across the board, used cars are going for more expensive than, than the MSRP on some of the new vehicles. So this was, this was the quote that we had from a vendor that, that we routinely use um, for any purchase of vehicles. That's where the estimate comes from. Yeah. You have a comment, Skip? Uh, we trade in uh, trucks. Yeah. We can't hear you. Nobody on, on TV can hear it. We trade in trucks from the highway department on a regular basis. Any reason that we can't transfer the responsibility for the truck that we're gonna trade in from the highway department just to give it to the uh, wastewater treatment plant? I, I believe that was asked. And I don't think they have a truck to do that with. So I think it was, I think that question was asked. Kevin could answer that if, if not, but. Okay. <coughs> I'd like to hold the vote. I know what yeah, CIPC I says. CIPC I'd like to know their question. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll dig into it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. All right. Next. Congregational church vote. Yeah, I guess I'll speak to that one. <laughs> so 
This is my favorite. This is not my favorite article. Let me just tell you. As we dig into the congregational church and a use, a short-term use for senior services, it we became very aware of the fact that there are structural repairs that need to happen. We, as you know, we requested $150,000 for that, for what we thought we would need. Um, not for the structural. Not for the structural. It was really for activities or responsibilities the town would need to complete before or in adjacent to DA making repairs. They committed to, to making some repairs and changes in the usable space that, that we could, you know, the, the section that's atta the attachment onto the sanctuary. Fellowship. Pardon? Fellowship. Hall. Yeah, mm -hmm. fellowship. I never can remember the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Lord of the Rings. Um, <laughs> that's a good way to do it. Um, but as we've dug into it, there's structural issues. Uh, there's some trust repairs that need to happen. The steeple needs to be repaired before it falls down on the building. Um, and then there's some structural issues in the basement that if we corrected them, we could utilize more of the space. So we did have a structural engineer come out and look at it briefly. Julie was there when he mm -hmm. came out. He gave us some recommendations. Um, the procurement to do this is probably going to be in the neighborhood of 35,000 or more. Just the procurement, not the fixes. So we have, and I think Julie mentioned it, we have the 150 that we set aside. We figure we're going to need 50 to 75, depending on what remediation might have to happen to use the space that DA would make repairs to. So that's off the top of the 150. We have a, an earmark from Comaford. She very graciously pursued this for us um, of $100,000. But if, you, if we're talking repairs that are well over hundred to two hundred thousand dollars we don't know what it's going to look like but we know that materials and supply chain issues are impacting anything that's a construction project so we're trying to be cautious about that um that's where this comes from we could always pass it over and i've said that to the board i will say it again to them tomorrow but if it isn't there we can't discuss it fundamentally right. Right. So even if you pass it over on the floor, if it isn't there, we can't discuss it. And if, if it is apparent that we need to do more in-depth work, if we don't have the money, we can't actually get to the temporary use of the space for senior services. And CIPC well, hasn't yeah. looked at this Right, one that's either, another, right? another application we have in. Yep, I sent it to them. That's the draft when the board hasn't gone through that one yet. It's hard when there's no real scope of work and no it is. estimate. And yep. we've had several conversations and walked the building more than once. And the more we walk it, the more we're afraid of what it's going to look like. I just think half of it is not really big enough to do a ton with. So that right. fellowship is small. The kitchen really is nice size, but it, it all needs to be redone. And the bathrooms need to be redone. And then what are you left with? There's not much. So you really need to focus on that big space. If we're really deciding not to tear that building down, you know, I'll just say, right. We, we should, we should something. get the beef up the floor, fix the thing and, and, and deal with the drainage and keep it. Clean. Exactly. I mean, if we're really going to keep it, otherwise let's take it down. Did we need to do any electrical work with that? I vaguely remember that. Oh yeah. Picture. Right, so yep. is that, is that all included in this you, amount as well? No, it's not really included so. because we, we actually need a bigger scope, but even getting to a bigger scope is gonna require some money. The other piece of this is it's a, there's also a discussion between the select board and the board of oversight about this, act, this particular activity. So like I said, if, if the board gets to a point where they wanna pass it over, they can request that we do that through the motion with the moderator and town council. But if we don't have it to discuss, and they asked me for numbers, this is this is the tightest number I can sort of come to without a lot more information. So my real focus is like, again, either take the building down or if we're gonna keep it, let's fix like those structure things first. I mean, even if we didn't do, you know, I, I think, if we're going to keep the building, we should upgrade and put some, you know, all the things that DA was going to do, we'll use anyways. We always have space and we could hold town meeting if we get that big structure. 
you know, the yeah. big room fixed and get the steeple done and the truss done. Those kind of are like tangible. If we're going to keep the building, let's just focus on that right now. And then if DA comes through and fixes that up, then we can regroup and say, okay, we've got a solid structure now. We've got a usable space. What else do, what do we really want to do with this thing now? Because I don't know if the boo wants to move in there for the senior thing. I think it's the best Option, Short -term option for any three yeah. counts. So I think if we do a good job and make it a nice space, I think they'll love to be there. And I think our seniors would love to be in that nice building. At least for a temporary period, because I figure it's going to take three to five years to build a building if we were to build a building. Mm. Going through the, the about town the requirements. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? I don't think we should be thinking about building any more buildings. Take care of the ones we've got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, they can't see me hiding my eyes in, on TV because I just don't want to think Two about words, anything. debt ceiling. Yes, <laughs> okay, so, so this, but this gets us further along to making repairs that we anticipate are going to be necessary to use the, the building itself. I mean, the truss really, the trusses do have to be repaired. That's a, that's a critical structure issue. Okay, so we want to wait to yep. CIPC and slash yes. board talk. So we'll wait for those. To take that up. So we can have time to hear them out and then vote. You may end up voting before town meeting. It really depends. I don't know what it's going to look like for a scheduling perspective with Mark and the rest of the committee. All right. Good. There's always that because usually Dan asks you if you have a recommendation, even if it's published, he often will ask. Senior housing feasibility study. This is the study I couldn't remember the name of. I make a motion we approve the four thousand dollars for subsidized senior housing feasibility study because it's in the big picture, it's not a whole lot of money. We have a second. I'll second that. Any discussion? So this is the study they got the grant to do, and this was um, it didn't quite cover it. So they need four thousand. They requested an additional four thousand, and so there's. I have to have a back and forth with council because she made a comment about whether you, we should be using CPA funds, which I had initially asked anyway. I, I thought we had a CPA appropriation. You do. We do. You do. It wasn't enough. But this something. is no. not. It, it's not enough. They need additional funds. The, the, con the contractor that we used, you know, the consultant um, has to pay 30% more salary than she anticipated in the original quote. So that's why there's additional money. And this is important for us so that we can go get financing. This is, a, you know, one of the boxes you have to check off for financing. So there is $500,000 or something set aside in CPA for... Yes, but they put it into the senior housing bucket. Into the reserve. Into yeah, the reserve. Into the reserve. So initially I asked that question and I was told we shouldn't do it through CPA. I'm not sure. But that no, we couldn't we couldn't use it for the vote. That five hundred thousand was not voted for a study. That was actually voted yeah. for yeah, into the reserve. Yeah. But we don't have a process for CPA to jump through the hoops in order right. to approve this by this town meeting. Correct. So where would this money come from then? Be a separate, be a separate cash. request. I don't know that it fits to capital though. Although they do have an approved capital request yeah. that went through CIPC that yeah, is, is scheduled. Yeah, they're already approved. This is essentially it's it's a cost to do business increase from my understanding. That is correct. CIPC looks at a project, they look at the price associated with the project. So if the price goes up, does that have to go back to CIPC before they go? I don't know. Carolyn, do you recall that having um, happened in the past? We've, we've never actually had any examples of that. Although people have come back for additional funding to do additional work on like some of the buildings, but the, you know, for mostly for like equipment and stuff like that, whatever price was estimated was able to cover it. This this is one of the you know COVID impacted quotes that we had. We actually had a quote, and then when we went to do the contract, they said nope, can't do it. 
it's going to be 30% more in, in, you know, employee fees. And I don't know, there's a couple other ex little expenses and that's why it was additional money. recommended it his comment was it's not that much money in the grand scheme of things that's my opinion yeah four thousand yeah it is what it is i mean if it pushes it along that's my opinion of it yeah. so the study's already contacted and moving forward or teed up at least yeah so we would basically have to find the money for this somewhere anyway Call a motion. <laughs> Way to move the meeting along. All right. All right. Good job. Do we have a, do we need a second on that for Please calling the question? Oh. oh, for calling the question? Sure. A little second. <laughs> then we have to vote on calling the question. If yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to withdraw my call? Let's just vote care. on the vote. Is there, is there any know, more discussion? The Are we good? Let's just vote on it. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. Look at that. All right. We can move on. Article 10. <laughs> All right. Article 10 uh, is, is just kind of a no brainer. We had a, a million dollars authorized for the clarifier. We uh, spent 900000 in our initial um, uh, borrowing. And so we have 100000 in. Uh, unused borrowing authority that just needs to be rescinded so it comes off of our books and isn't mm -hmm. sitting there as being a, a, a debt. That, yeah. Make a motion, a motion to accept Article 10 to rescind the unused borrowing authority of $100,000. We have a second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Good. Next. Thank you. Union, union agreement. <laughs> it's, 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 it's to some extent, it's, it's housekeeping on one, for one bargaining unit and the other bargaining unit. We're giving them the opportunity. Um, they haven't ratified based on the negotiated terms, but I left the highway union in the article. So we have to revote police because there was a procedural issue. We didn't have copies of the ratification by town meeting, so we have to go back. The funding's there. We just okay. have to take town meeting has to accept it now that it's completely ratified. Um, and like I just said, I included highway union in case they ratify before town meeting. If it, it isn't there, we can't talk about it. But if it is, we can. If, if they haven't ratified, then we change the motion. Yep. Okay. Um, the highway um, contract that's not ratified yet, does that dollar value fall within the dollar value we voted last year at town meeting for the pay? I don't know. We're not do. sure. Yeah. In that case, if there was a money consequence, we've notified people that we're going to discuss it. We could put it in the motion. This was direction that was given to me by council last time we did this. Um, but frankly, without feedback from them, it's hard for us to make that calculation. Because I, I thought we took the money out last time. I know we had talked about having money set aside, but I thought we, we when they didn't, we allocated ten thousand to to right, right for for the appropriation that we brought to town meeting. Yep, and, and it wasn't so that used. Cover it, oh, I, okay. So we do still have it. I yeah, thought it was like a special question. appropriation. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was just part of the yeah. It was part of the total. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We added it in there just for right. Case. So as this is written, there's no financial impact. And if there were to be a financial impact, then we there could would be add a motion that. on the floor yeah. or something. We would that put that financial it. impact into the motion. Which you'll see probably before town meeting if we get an answer. We'll have, yeah, we'll have the motion. I don't People know if we- ask. You could hold on it if you yeah. want. In fact, we I had a conversation with council about that yesterday, but not the motion language, just a question about the okay. union response. Should we wait? So I'm leaning. So we're, we're not going to know that. We're not going to know about Friday, highway. We right? do know about police. 
So police is a is a is a done deal. Yeah, it, it's a done it's deal. Good. The money was already and the allocated. money is there. Yeah. it's already. Good. It's just we need town meeting to actually say okay. bless you, go forth and do this. So I I would move that we approve this as written, mm -hmm. which indicates no financial impact, and that if there is a financial impact, we'll discuss that, like if we do a little meeting before yeah. town meeting. That's kind of a convoluted motion. But. <laughs> Why don't we just wait? <laughs> will Will we even know, like by this weekend? I don't know. Okay. But the way it's written, it includes both collective bargaining units in the event that that's the case. I'm just trying to be cautious because somebody could come come in and say, "Hey, we signed it three days before town meeting." But if it isn't there, we can't address it. If it is there, at least we can address a portion of the motion. You guys can wait. We're having yeah, we're having another meeting, right? You gotta go over. We no, are. Are you meeting. available this Friday at five thirty? Check. I think so. Let me check. Because I have a, I do have a volunteer commitment, and I can't remember if it's Friday or Saturday. I should be. Is that the only time we can meet? And then Saturday at three thirty. I can't do Saturday because I have a commitment of pre of pre existing one. Okay. Um, so Friday at five thirty. Yep. Um, the reason we picked that is that we can't. We have conflicts Monday and Tuesday, and we have to get it done. Okay. In That's order fine. to get it posted. And if I can so. be there Saturday, I can. I will okay. try. But well, we're getting enough done that we might be able to just finish this off Friday. And then, um, so we have, does anybody second the motion to approve this? I second. All right. Are you guys okay with doing this now? I'd rather wait. But You'd rather wait? But it's up for a vote, so I can just stand and say no. Anybody else want to wait? If you guys want to wait, that's fine. By me. I just don't, we won't know any more by Friday than we know now, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, basically, we're I, not going to do everything until the town meeting. Over. That's why I was thinking, yeah, we should go ahead and make our recommendation. I feel like as long, the way it's written, there's no financial impact. As long as there's no financial impact, yeah. it changes, then it. we can change what Same. we Yeah, do. and if it changes, then we'll change our opinion. Yeah. Uh, right? Sure. Okay, you can always take a second vote. Yeah, any more discussion? No. All those in favor? Oppose? Abstain? <laughs> okay, so that's a 401. Next, Article 12. <coughs> so there's a separate handout that's a tip. I don't want to vote this tonight because I want you guys to have the opportunity to read the tip. Um, but good. what this is, is Nupro buying the old pickle plant property. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to do that, there is a, a tax increment financing agreement, which basically gives them a discount off of their taxes for some period of time. And then there's a bunch of provisions in there about, we give you this discount, but you got to like, so many people. higher local if you can mm -hmm. and you have so many people and you're going to build so much of a building right. and blah 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 blah, blah all that so basically stuff. performance standards and they, is, are indicated in that does anyone here know how we started at the seventy thousand dollars or the 70 percent exemption where, yeah. where we, why do we start at we 70%? started at 100 oh really they started with a request down. of 100 and the tip group part. got together and said we like the tiff breakdown that we had that we indicated would be workable with pilot precision mm -hmm. that was not approved by the state in this case um, the there's so that you've got two elements here you've got state um, offerings and then you have but you have to have a tip with a tank right so they're building they're taking the property over they're putting it back on the tax rolls they're building somewhere in the neighborhood of a 16 to 28 million dollar development um and so process wise, the TIF group got together and talked about what they wanted to see. 
they wanted to see if, if we were going to do this kind of percentage, they wanted to see um, performance standards related to that. So Julie found us some information and we built a, a TIF agreement around some of that information. It's a negotiated agreement. Um, it can't be signed by the select board until town meeting votes on it. But what it's intentionally, towns have to partner with these companies that then partner with the state. Right. This language has been approved. The TIF agreement language has been approved by the Mass Office of Business Development subcommittee that addresses these requests, these applications. I went to the meeting last week. So they've approved it conditional on town meetings approval and the select board signature. Um, really, it, it helps our commercial Great win for uh, town. base to do this. And it's it's structured so that they're, it, it's sort of front loaded and mm -hmm. then it, it pairs off in the last five years, four years, something like that. And one of the things I noticed on this was that they were um, supposed to, in good faith, try to hire a certain amount of people in Franklin County. Mm -hmm. Do we have like a remedy or anything if they don't do that? They, or remedies if they don't do anything are, else in here? They're already having to advertise and look for candidates in all counties around us because there just isn't enough people applying. But yeah, their good faith is to try and they're looking for people locally, but really they're going to Hamden, Hampshire, in the Conne North, Northern Connecticut, Berkshires, just to find enough people that, with that skill to come and do that. Um, it's a very particular mm. Um, business, but okay. I will say this, they do, it's not necessarily a remedy, but it is a reporting requirement each year. They have to tell us, they have to give us a progress report, not only on the construction, but also on their progress with their hiring mm -hmm. goals. And, mm -hmm. and so we will see some information on that. Um, it's just, if they don't have the talent to hire, that's an issue. I will tell you that this question or a similar question came up at the meeting last week. And the question was, will you be taking advantage of training opportunities right. that you might be able to get through Mass Office De of Business Development or labor develop, um, the labor group too? Because there's a lot out there. They haven't fully reviewed it, but they're willing to try to do that. It's just, they do have a very specialized business. So they're not sure. They have internal training sort of built into their scope, but the opportunity to work with the state is out there and they said they will try to avail themselves, yeah, which could get mean some money. It, it could impact our local area. Yeah, train, train, train our guys to do the work if they can get some funding to help train locally. Offset some of those costs. And that's what those grants, which are separate, are intended to do. So they, if you look at the bottom of the third page, that paragraph four there, says that if the company doesn't fulfill its obligations under section eight of the agreement you can go and try and decertify this IPC or something yeah you right. could. it's just is it unlikely to happen but yeah there is hopefully something we're thrilled they're here and not northern connecticut or they were they have a spot yeah. down south too that they yeah. were going they to. looked at a couple of areas so I guess the other point is this, these percentages, when they were come up with, we had examples of a whole bunch of other TIFs that have been done in town um, that were in sort of similar yeah. percentages. Right. And it was and they, for a bunch of the big companies. Yeah. So, we had, so we had TIFs for years with various companies. Um, BBC was one of them. And the TIF structure was a little bit different, but I think there was a TIF structure on the state end that was more lucrative. Mm -hmm. They yep. had to connect. So in this case, the development is a lot bigger. It, this is a substantial development. It's, it's from top to bottom and you're looking at millions of dollars. And so that was sort of part of the recognition that I think everybody that looked at this made. I, I was on the TIF committee for years and years and years. And, you know, we've done more local businesses like BBC, Pekarski's, Richardson's Candy Kitchen. Those were all um, local and they were smaller. And the idea was to trigger the states, which is the majority of the benefit is the state's tax rebate. But um, this is new construction. It is quite a bit more. And 
when you the the first year this is the first year you're using up the first year and nothing has really happened yet so it sounds like we're giving a lot back but in reality they haven't even really started building yet so that percentage of taxes that we would collect anyway of of the building is not going to be that much so we're truly not giving that much up because it's an empty lot at the moment okay that yeah. makes sense They've got a big incentive to build it quickly. Oh yeah, they're they very do. anxious to get started. There's also yeah. the element of the expedited permitting district. So that's a permitting process that we will start tomorrow. The board will open a hearing tomorrow. And that has a limitation so that we can incentivize getting this done sooner rather than later. And that's a statutory limitation of 180 days from start to finish. So do you guys want to take time to read the yeah. tip and everything before we go to sure. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on it while we're talking about it right now? No, all right. So it's 7.30, we've been going an hour and a half. Um, we have the next two are the land swap. The one after that is the home rule. That's the one about the 25% for the sewer. We have two home rules. We have an exemption from mandatory retirement age for three police oh, officers okay. and then the other home rule special legislation request or home rule request is to make changes to the acts of 1935 that established the sewer system and created the first funding source. The select boards discussed this with council several times. They're going to look at it tomorrow and finalize language. Now, the language that you see is substantially complete, but council has recommended doing a actually doing a dual hearing so holding we have to hold a hearing on the sewer bylaw change mm -hmm. in good it, it's it's a good faith effort to invite um the public to participate in that process but what we did when i wrote the legal notice and council approved it is we'll actually address both these requests in that hearing process so have give the people a chance age and the no, no just the acts the, so acts. Acts. the two sewer okay. items will have a hearing okay Good. And both items will be available for for people to discuss with the select board sewer commissioners. I'd love to talk about Article 16 tonight if we can, if we're starting to talk about like when we're going to. Are we just skipping all 13 or 14? You want me for to now. give you a brief? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care. It just it's a question. Okay, so here's what here's what we have left, and I, I'd like to wrap up by eight because I get tired. <laughs> so, okay. um, so we have we have we have the the land swap, we have the two the sewer articles, and we have the library. Um, I've put together a bunch of information on debt on the library that I'd like to run through this evening if I can. Yeah, It'll right. probably take, would it take us 10 minutes yeah. maybe um, to do that? Great. Um, I think that's good information before so, you guys go back to the rest of the other things on the warrant. So yeah. Um, I heard about it, but I haven't seen you discuss it yet. So. Okay. <laughs> So what do you guys want to do? You want to talk about sewer now for like 10 minutes and then do library debt for 10 minutes and then move on? You guys good with that? Yeah. Okay. What you got? So six, um, six, we're on 16, I think. So 17 doesn't have the verbs in there. I assume you're going to send that to us at some point. Yes. So, so the board has to vote on the language for the hearing, which is, this is a general bylaw, not a zoning bylaw. So it can be substantially complete and we can still make um, changes that are not like, like what council says, substantive. So we have, DPC has looked at this, council has looked at this, the select board and council have talked about it. The language that you will see for the sewer bylaw change, there's a couple items that have to be addressed by the board. They'll do that tomorrow. We'll set up, get ready for the hearing. What I'm gonna put in the warrant is what they vote tomorrow. Again, general bylaw, so it doesn't need to be exactly the same. Uh, the intent here is to establish a structure for the sewer commissioners to administer the system. Um, regulations would be promulgated later that directly affect operations. So you've got the bylaw that gives you the structure for the sewer system and wastewater activities, and then the regulations actually tell you how things happen. The acts 
question came up, the board wanted to consider some changes to the acts of 1935 special legislation because it's outdated and because there's some elements that have changed since this first went into effect, since they first started building the sewer system. At the time, they didn't even have the treatment plants. So those came in in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, so it's old legislation that we need to have the legislature because it's a special act fix with our request. The language you see in the acts is, is I think, fine. Is there a financial impact? Mm -hmm. It will have a final financial impact because it could conceivably change the percentage yeah. by which, that's where Mark's going with this, the percentage by which you would um, ask real estate taxpayers to pay moving forward. This is not backward facing. It only happens for activities or changes or upgrades or repairs that happen as of the date it's approved and the legislature votes it. It goes into effect once the legislature votes it. The intent is to have a consideration to change those percentages for, a, for projects that might come up in the future. And like I said, to, to address some of the, the issues that changed over the last, what, 80 years? Ish. <laughs> so modernized to some extent. So is the intent to be able to put more of the cost of sewer up, sewer work onto the beneficiaries of it rather than the town, or is that is a consideration the town to take on more of the cost? Well, no. looking at how this is written, it basically takes out of the, the the bylaws, anyways, the the kind of you know rails, you know for you know for for how much you can expect. Um, people people to pay because it's saying here the the part that struck is um not less than one fourth nor more than two thirds of the whole cost right so what it does is it puts if i'm interpreting this correctly it puts the power on the sewer commissioners to deter, determine that without those guardrails correct so folks who are in uh the district um you know the the area where they're not served by sewer don't have any any protections other than what the you know, sewer commissioners give them. So the intent this is, is kind of sketchy. They also yeah. have no obligation, right? The sewer right. could pick, they could pick zero. They could pick zero. Right now they can't pick zero. Right, so exactly. they can't pick zero, but if we have like another big project, they could, it, pick, 80. They, they could pick 80, they could pick 100. The so, intent is to be able, at least, to, correct me if I'm wrong, you wanna answer this? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I, I, it's not yeah. necessarily an answer, yeah. but it's based on some discussions I've heard the board have. My my only issue with this is, is addressing... it, it moves the guardrail. Like there's there's no there's nothing to stop sewer commissioners to say fine one hundred. On know. the other hand, they could change that percentage to reduce to provide some relief for real estate um, taxpayers and create the higher burden. To sewer users. Yeah, I mean that's it could, been it, discussed. It could cut both ways, but it, it, yeah. yes, it, it can have a dual, a well, dual. I mean, it can be a dual edge so sword. So can it be what? chosen without vote, though? If we have a new sewer project come up, mm -hmm. like Old Deerfield, and it would have to be voted on by the town Absolutely. and the percentage that is paid for by taxes versus it's still going to come back does it have town. to be voted by town because it says right here it's it's through the select board acting as sewer commissioners so, so there's nothing in here that says that it would have to be voted by you, town but any borrowing or any funding source has to be approved by the town okay but if they switch <laughs> you know the percentage does that still have to go through town vote i don't well i can't answer that i'm not council but what i would say is they would probably indicate the percentage breakdown like they did before because because we also don't yeah. know how long this is going to take to go through the legislature. yeah the, there's just not the, like my, my issue with this is there's nothing clear to me that that has any 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 procedure other than going through the sewer commissioners so, so this could have a big financial impact on you know the taxpayers that that don't have sewer keep in mind though we the sewer commissioners will be promulgating regulations that impact funding and operations because funding is directly related to operations. They can't do it without making changes to the sewer bylaw first. 
and the, the board discussed changing the acts to modernize and to consider having that relief mechanism as they move forward in additional projects. Um, but frankly, I can't tell you what the impacts are gonna be right now. I can just say this is what's proposed. And I would recommend, I'm, in, I'm anticipating that this hearing is gonna be the 19th of October. I would recommend that you all attend and listen to the conversation. Everybody. Yeah. Can, so I, I think we all can see what it's intended to do. I think, but I think Mark's concern is that, you know, rule once a law is in place, it can be used as written rather than as intended. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen 30 years from now with the sewer right. commissioners. 30 years from now, big project comes up, it's gonna look really attractive to, you know, start, you know, changing, you know, the you know, who pays what when when you start to get, you know west of 91 you know there's a whole bunch of uh taxpayers there that aren't on sewer that you know could could potentially fund your project for you so you know i th that's that's where my concern is there's there's no guardrail like there is with the uh the the, the current bylaws but it, in the current bylaw it ties us to the percentage that was communicated when the south deerfield project was approved yeah I, well i and guess what i'm trying to say limited because of those guardrails so yeah well, I guess what I'm trying to say is, it, as it's written right now, um, without these changes, it's imperfect, but it at least, to, to a certain degree, protects the people that are um, not on, on sewer. It's intended to make changes that would allow some of those protections to be put in place. My yeah. recollection of the select board's conversations. Um, but again, they want to discuss this in a hearing process Yeah. so that they can get that feedback. Because anecdotally, I think members of the board, and certainly myself, We've gotten some feedback where people are asking similar questions, Mark. So yeah. this is the reason you have a hearing process. And this is the reason we want both these items to go through that process to avail people of the opportunity to speak and ask the question you just asked. Yeah. Weren't, weren't we also intending to have a pre-town meeting? Right yes, there? we're talking, we were talking about that. Julie and I talked about that. I'd love to talk about it, but it's not a, I, I, I he can't has talk a, about they, it tonight. The board needs so. to talk about it tomorrow. tomorrow. So, okay. But yeah, I'm please come to the meetings. Sort of I think yeah. it's really critical market. that we have sewer users there, non-sewer users there. It, it's a huge, huge discussion and a huge impact on the sewer users and the taxpayers. And I don't really, I don't know where the fine line should be. So yeah. really need to hear from people. But if we don't make changes, we can't adjust the fine line. Yeah, it is what That's it is. That's council's comment. Yeah, um, but what I just, I, like I said, I, I don't like it as written. You know, the, mm -hmm. the thing that I keep thinking about is like, you know, what if we have, what if we have a senior that lives west of, you know, 91, who's you know, already on a fixed income, and then, you know, 20 years from now, we have to make more upgrades, and then they just get whacked with like a, a, a huge bill for services they can't consume. Mm -hmm. So this at least has guardrails for those folks. I, yeah, I don't know. It, it seems like, you know, we're, we're discussing one imperfect system and then potentially bringing in, you know, an, an, another um, <laughs> a, a, another way of, you know, divvying up these costs that don't have those protections in. I think what the intention is to have some flexibility. And so we all need to read this stuff critically and think about this because we what we're trying to come up with is flexibility so that we can, you know, make the users who are really using it and there are not taxpayers pay their fair share for, you know, a project up in their neighborhood. So, you know, we, we've got to come up with something. That's all. Yeah. Come to the meetings, please. Yes. Everybody. The intention, the intention is to come up with some ability to have be flexible. So any ideas, we're all open to it. It sounds as if if there's going to be a meeting on the 19th that this is not yet fixed in what is being requested then. If you're still accepting public input. Yeah, we haven't had a hearing yet. Yeah. We haven't had a hearing, but the language that, that you see is what the board indicated they wanted me to put in the warrant. Doesn't mean the motion can't change, but if you're doing special legislation, um, that's, that's usually refine your language based on council's recommendations and the requirements that the legislature has. And these are the conversations that the select board has had that lead us to this point. 
and hearings might change that. Right? Awesome. You never know. I would almost prefer to wait to vote this one oh, yeah. after that hearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to wait until after the hearing. And I, I'm wondering yeah. if this should even be on this, you know, if this warrant should even be here. This seems like it's something that, you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe, I don't know. If we're if we're having the hearings on the 19th and then we go to town meeting with the 24th, mm -hmm. but that's a, it, it, initially it, we weren't going to have both things. We were going to just yeah. do the bylaw, but council recommended we include that, and it makes sense to give people a sense of to get a sense of what the people think right. about. Yeah, it. but if we if we we'll we'll um, skip over it if if we're not satisfied. I don't think we want to trade one bad bylaw for another one that's you know at least but that's my feeling like I, the idea was to try to fix it moving forward considering we're moving forward with the old deerfield sewer treatment plant but if if we're not going to come up with a satisfactory solution i think we will table it and and keep working on it over the winter they would certainly consider tabling it before yeah it's like we should definitely table it now. yeah yeah i think so <laughs> Yep. All right. Um, let's see if I can't share my screen. Okay. So looking at library debt. Let's see if I can do this without having some big money. You guys can see that. Okay. You guys have seen That's this before. So we went through, huh? No, no, I'm talking to myself, sorry. Okay. Um, we went through and we started this meeting, all of the projects out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and last time we met, we talked about all of the debt that we have already obligated. So, um, we look here, I should have thought through how I was going to present this, <laughs> but this is the debt that is outstanding as of June 30th. Um, so it's the highway garage, the wastewater treatment plant, this is already obligated 15761 and the school roof. So our total outstanding debt that's already obligated is 18866986. We have approved but unissued debt for the wastewater treatment plant of a, an additional 6,239. So that's a total outstanding and unissued debt of $25,105,986. Somewhere in our financial policies, we commented that, well, we should look at this per capita. We should look at this as percent of per capita income. So if you take that, that outstanding debt right now is just shy of $5,000 per capita. Every person, all of 5,090 people. <coughs> just I'm shy children. $5, huh? children. Men, children, and men. I don't know if you're allowed to say that. Pets? Yeah. Pets? You know, no cows. No cows. So, um, and then as a percent of per capita income, and I, I had to look up per capita income, and it is indeed per capita income. It is the total income of everybody in town divided by the 5,090 people in town. And my kid's like, oh, I made $44,000. <laughs> <laughs> nope. um, so that's 11.2% of that. That doesn't mean much to me yet, but it's a number. Um, and then as a percent of our equalized value. So the equalized value is essentially the total assessed value of property in town on which property taxes get paid. So it doesn't include nonprofit or mm -hmm. state land or whatever, but it's stuff that you actually get. Um, and that's the, the equalized value is the value that they use for the debt limit. So that's the one that 5% of which we can borrow to. This excludes New England Natural Baker property um, loan because that, you said you wrote the check on it today. So that's yep. gone, we don't have to worry about that anymore. So that's where we are with that. If, um, all right, this is where the small screen is gonna be kind of a problem. This thing is in the way. Um, let me see if I can get it to that. Okay, 
So we've laid, if you lay that out and look at year by year, um, you look at the principal and the interest that's going to be paid on that. The wastewater treatment plant debt, the, the two USDA loans, we have those dollar values and laid them out. And those are, these are what we're actually going to be paying for that. The change order and the wastewater, the phase two stuff. So this is the essentially 6 million that we have left. That, um, I just made up a number. So I picked 3% interest for 20 years, mm -hmm. okay? And that's, and assumed that it would be a constant payment every year instead of um, the, the, the highway garage, for example, we pay a constant amount of principal. We pay the same principal every year and the interest goes down. So as we go along, we're paying less and less every year. That's not what I chose for this. This is a constant payment. Um, that's enough about that. All right, so if we look at that debt service, um, so this is, I'm trying to make you guys see sick with my okay. foot. Um, so this is year by year. This is the approved town funded debt that we have right here. So if you look at that, like on a little chart, mm -hmm. the orange ones are the wastewater treatment plant. Here's the end of the 20 years where we've paid off part of it. And this is the USDA loan continuing on for 40 years. It goes off yep. the right side of the page. This gray part is the highway garage. We will have paid that out off in 2034. And then this yellow part right here is the school roof. So there's this year, next year left, and that will be gone. Um, if you look at, I, I was just interested, you know what, I have this much bigger. Let's look here. So there's what I was just showing you. Yep. That if you look at it with the, the green here is what the enterprise fund is paying in debt service. Okay, so that's not taxes, but that there are a bunch of people in town who have exactly. sewers who are paying that through yep. their user fees. So that just gives you a feel for sort of a visual feel for just how much debt is out there and how much this is debt service, how much is being paid each year. Some, so some of that green is being paid by the nonprofits and other users who are not, mm -hmm. you know, taxpayers, whatever. Okay. So now, uh, lost track of where I am. Okay, so now the library. So we talked about the library. The library is 12,300,000 is the current estimate. We're going to assume that we get the 4 million mm -hmm. MBLC or whoever they are. And we assume that they actually raised $2 million in donations. And then laying that out, this again, I just kind of made up, but FY23, I assume we're going to spend a million dollars in FY23, 5 million, 5.3 million in 24, 25, and another million in 26. So that's just sort of as construction. Right. The, it, I don't mm -hmm. know what it will be, but that's an assumption. Okay. The way the MBLC contribution works is they divide that into five payments, um, five equal payments, and they are associated with specific events. I don't remember the events, but it's something like the drawings are done, you break ground, you have a certain percentage right. of construction complete, the whole thing's complete, you're punchless, I don't know, something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's measurable and goals. The way they told it is that in general, what you end up with is one payment per fiscal year. You yeah. can get some of that stuff done more quickly and maybe you'll get them squished together more. But so I just picked one payment for fiscal year and laid that out. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just made an assumption for how the donations will roll in mm -hmm. over a four year period. So if you look at that, what we will do is pay interest only on that until, you know, each amount that we take out until the whole thing is done. And at that point we will borrow $6.3 million. Um, and mm -hmm. again, I made the same assumption there, 20 year, 20 years at 3%, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at that, um, debt service roll up. So here again, this is what our current debt service is. And then if you add the library, this is what the library looks like. 
So the first couple of years are, you know, right in here is interest only. Um, and then this is where it becomes um, the payment of the principal rolls at the end. So if, I think we talked through this already. Um, all right, so this is the same, this, this we just talked through. Here's the 12.3, the 4 million, the 2 million in donations. 6.3 million loan. So that becomes $1,238 per capita. Um, if we do the ARPA subsidy request that with those 12, all 12 towns together, then our loan will be 2 million. Yeah, yeah me too. Me too. Um, so here is tax bill impact. So if you look, this dollar value is, um, after like after the building's built and we get out here to where we're paying 423,000 per year in debt service if you divide that over our total assessed value and look at how much dollars out of pocket per year um, for houses of different prices so mm -hmm. that's what this is so the as planned that's the four million dollar grant the two million dollars of donation and no ARPA um, the median house price for um, Deerfield mm -hmm. is, you know, I think it's a mean actually, but regardless, the average house price is $340,459. So for the average house, it's going to be $171 per year for 20 years. You can look at this list and figure out how much your house costs and see what the price is on your house. If the ARPA subsidy comes through, this is the dollar value, so it's much better. It's seventy-seven. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I. I don't know if we'll get that or not. I yeah. would not Something count on it by any means. Hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Yeah, exactly. And then this right-hand column is if, like, if the library just sort of falls through and doesn't get the donations that they're hoping that they'll get. Mm -hmm. I, I actually don't expect that to happen. I think they probably will get half the amount of donations. But this is assuming they've already got a commitment for, you said, 700 and something, 70,000 yeah, or something. Yeah. So I assumed eight, that they got $800,000 worth mm -hmm. of donation um, instead of $2 million. And so um, that brings you from $171 to $204 a year. It really Perfect. helpful, Julie. Yeah, it helps people. Really helpful. Um, Can you the, print that? Yeah. You the right hand one, anyway. Yep. So the other thing I did is this: the this this fifty percent fifty cent mill rate mm -hmm. increase. Whatever. This it's a three point three percent increase over. Let me explain that again. The FY 2023 tax rate is 1571. Yeah. Well, that's the FY 22. FY yeah. 22 tax rate. 1570, right? So 50 cents divided by 1517 is 3.3%. So if we put this on ourselves right now, it would be a 3.3% increase. Who knows what the tax rate will be by that? But, um, uh, so what, what happens if we have an override, if we do a two, two and a half override right this year? One, one no. second. So this is assuming an override. Right? It, won't, it won't change what we pay in taxes. If you, if, if you um, so we have a 15.17 rate. Do you mean um, if we vote this, say the following year, it's an additional 3.3% 3, 3 on top. So it's like 18 something percent, or is that what you're getting at with that number? Okay. So this. That doesn't mean our tax rate will be 18 something. No, no, no. Oh. It's a 3.3% increase. I got you. So it will go from 1517 to 1567. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yep. So 3.3%. And you'll note that. that it's framed, the question's framed as a debt excluded uh, property. Right. right. Which is different than the proposition two and a half override, but For general I mean. We are bumping against that already, too. We had that oh. conversation earlier this year. We need to do a, a bigger study of that long term. 
But if we get a debt exclusion on this, it won't matter. This won't matter. This will be in addition to whatever would be a consideration if we did run, run up against a need to do a prop two and a half for operational expenses. Because you do, we've been doing these as project by project. Nobody's actually taken on prop two and a half for operations of municipal and school. And yet I remember the conversations and it needs to happen that. at some point. Schools are under control. And I think he can tell us it's been 30 years since we did one, a prop two and a half. Never done one, right? Okay. So we only had it for debt excluded projects. Right. Okay. Okay. Right, than it is to do yeah. a true operational expense vote. Yeah, that's absolutely true. That's and the library for that. How does that work? What are our total? Total debt? Total bill, total that we can. The debt ceiling? So, or borrowed minimum, yeah. Yeah. That's so, it, debt. that's debt. where um, we can kind of play with the spreadsheet. Um, we don't have the setup. <coughs> well, regardless, um, bring it up. So, you don't so if you look at here, so here's our outstanding debt, and then the unissued debt, and the that that we've already committed ourselves to, right? Um, if we look at the library, this is the the number that six point three million. That we've been talking about mm -hmm. all along, right? Uh, what, million, that is twelve point three million is what they've told us the, the current estimate for the total price of the library, minus four million that the MDL, whoever they are, are gonna give us. And uh, we still have to that four million for that. We do. Right, we do. but in the they borrowing. paid so right. if you they look it off um, and oh they pay it to us year by year, right? So year one, we've only spent a million dollars. They've given us eight hundred thousand dollars, and we're going to assume there's donations of two hundred thousand. So year one, it, it's even. Year two, we're going to spend five million dollars. I made that number up. They're going to give us another eight hundred thousand dollars. So we're going to have some number. So if you look right here, it is higher. So FY twenty four is three point five million. FY twenty five, it's seven point three. 26 at 7.1 and then 27 at 6.3 that's where we get 6.3 no i'm not i'm eliminating it eight hundred thousand dollars at a time because we get it in eight hundred thousand dollar batches over five years so if you look right here five increments of eight hundred thousand dollars specific benchmarks MBLC has like yeah. specific milestones where you get the money and it, it averages out to be like one fifth over a five year period. So, when do we actually do the borrowing? We start with bands and then move to the bond once the project's complete. Correct. And whatever they're still borrowing. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's still a borrow. It's still debt. It's still right. debt. It's still debt. Right. It's, so, it's, yeah. to go through the assumptions again, we're assuming in FY23 mm -hmm. that we are going to spend a million dollars, which will be like design services mm -hmm. and yep. studies and that kind of stuff. We will get 800,000 from MBL, whoever they are, and 200,000 in donations. Okay. So year one, we're gonna break even. FY24, 
we're going to spend $5 million in construction costs and get maybe almost halfway through construction. We're going to get $800,000 in and we're going to get $600,000 in donations. So we're going to have to borrow five, 3.5 million. Isn't that the donations time? Right. So at that point, we'll have three point five million dollars of debt. So, but but when you vote this, if the town were to approve the twelve point <coughs> three million dollar project, then we have twelve point three right there. You've got that... twelve point three million authorized debt. Okay. Yeah, and so it adds okay. to your debt load whether you're taking out the the money so... yet or not. That's what, that's what that. Skip okay. is referring to. Yeah, it's committed. So this yeah. would be essentially 12.3 million. But, but just because Julie's the town point. is authorized it, we're not, we don't have to pay interest on stuff we've but just authorized. Right. No, but it, it does factor into how much you can borrow later. Right, I, yeah, right. I understand it affects the um, borrowing. And to Julie's point, she's showing a pay down based on donations and the MDLC money. Um, and then once you get to the final piece of it, you do a bond. Now there's bonds, bond costs associated with all of that, but that's that's its individual loan, like you have to hire the right. Okay. And once you do the bond, you can rescind the unused borrowing. So then you'd free up your debt limit. Right. Like we're doing okay. hundred thousand. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like we're doing so hundred thousand. Yeah. Essentially, what I'm hearing Julie say is this impact is, is some of this impact is going to go away over a period of time. Right. Right. <coughs> Right. Well, depending on what the ballot for last week. Possible. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Call it December 7th. <laughs> <laughs> Which takes us to 37 million and our limit is 40.4. 40. Really close. <laughs> and someplace out there, one of the ones that when when you get so high in our debt limit, Julie. Um, how much does it, do we know what the impact is on the interest rate? You have to talk with Mike. No. Uh, Bob. I don't, don't know that until we go out somewhere. to borrow. Oh, okay. Correct. Yeah. yeah, we don't know what that is, Carolyn, until we go out to borrow and they actually do the requests for submission and of rates and, and to the different banks. Just, just it doesn't to, show how much we've exceeded the debt limit, right? And that pink road 25. No, we could. You know, just to, the the interest rates are going up a quarter, three quarters of a percent a whack, and they're probably not going to stop for a couple of years. Correct. They want to get that up up to four. So, I mean, they went to, from zero to be four by the time they're done. That's just for so, Fed rate. So, so column G, we got to look at what we cannot do, what we can't finance. Yeah. So, what do we kick out? Well, well, that has the old, we have no idea what's going on with the old beer field. Right. But yeah. And absolutely. we don't have anything for senior housing or, uh, yeah, and the senior senior center, I guess, doesn't kick in until a little bit later. But yeah. Right. But this, this is totally, totally. We also have to talk about the fact that we've got a uh, five million <coughs> uh, replacement of old sewer pipes. And, yep. Mm -hmm. Manholes and yeah, yeah. structures. Person holes. <laughs> That's true. I I hate to be a, a Debbie Downer, but the water districts have um, water exactly. yeah. pipelines, um, cost replacements too. That I mean that will impact people that have town water, water both sides. I think there's like six million. Um, for the South Deerfield Water District, and I think it's like three to four million in the old Deerfield Water District for pipes. That's not part of the debt limit, but well, even if it doesn't add new taxpayers, it's taxpayers who are paying. It is, yeah. right? Exactly. It's a compounding effect to have okay. those but infrastructure that, pieces too. Forty million, all of those things that we have to do, and we're coming up against it and haven't done anything. Yep. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's the 
we're very aware of it. Well, I, I don't think the town is all aware of it. Right. And I think it's essential yeah. that they become aware of it. Yeah, I, I, I've been seeing discussions of people saying it's not like an either or situation. And you know, I think there's a lot of people that, that believe that we're not close to hitting our ceiling. So, yeah. And then the other thing that like, I don't know if we want to factor this in or not, but the library has to remain open. That's one of the strings for this, strings attached to this MBLC grant. And they have to have a certain square footage. I don't remember what it is. So it's not a ton, but it is space. They need, they, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to have a, you know, cost associated with possibly, you know, finding a place for them and maybe renovating a building or something during this. I think that that's included in the 12 point. I believe think it, it is. Is, is I it? Believe that's what Dan and, uh, said. Okay. What I've heard them say is possibly just like renting a trailer. Yeah, they don't yeah. need a. Yeah. They don't need a ton much. Of space. They don't need much. I think they just need so many books. I think out and so many days a week or whatever. If I recall, they do yeah. seem to have a plan in place for that. Yeah. I, oh, good. I'm not part okay. of that subcommittee, but they but do seem to have a plan. part of the structure. I was under the understanding they couldn't have a meeting room that was available to the other entities in the town or not its primary purpose has to be for the library primary yeah. purpose is library so we're gonna get a four million dollar because of a four million dollar grant we can't have a room for the town to use yep right okay i just want to make sure i'm straight no, well, not i think they, 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 well, I mean, they plan to do doesn't that. mean that other people can't use it, it the just, way it was put is that it has to be primarily Right. Library gets first dibs. Right. Library if, if, if I may interject, that we can. from yeah. what the, the MBLC representative who came to our town campus meeting, she seemed very concerned about the possibility of us trying to use the library grant to pay for other stuff. And right. so they're very protective of that. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, if the library has a meeting room, I don't think the MBLC would, uh, you know, well, A, once it's built, they don't have any say over no, what we're using not for. Exactly. And B, I don't think it is their intent to prevent, like, the, if the finance committee needs to use a room in the library, you know, prevent, the, I don't think they would, they would say that that violates the grant they're giving. Right. It's just, what we about, can't like park. I think the idea is to prevent them from us, from prevent us from using it to fix up this building. Right. <laughs> right. No, I understand their intent, but what about the nonprofits? Like say the Deerfield Lions want to use a yeah, room. Yeah. That's fine. I, well, think I think they, they can. can. Right. Yeah. What they don't, what they don't want is for us to build that room and then move the senior center in there and have right. that be a senior center. Room. That's what we yeah, can do. Exactly. It has that's to be a library room that's available for use by. And the seniors can come and use it for okay. a book reading or something like right. that or, or it will, whatever program okay. if it's not Thank being you. used. I got one other yeah. question as long as I have the floor. Oh. Has CIPC approved the increase to 12 million? Uh, the CIPC didn't uh, approve the first amount either. So no, they did not approve the increase and they did not approve the original amount. Okay. So I, Candace needs to facilitate that and request. sometimes I have to. Prompt. She put her request in for the original, I believe. She what, put it in for the original, yes. Yeah. But not the. And, and so there was a lot of discussion about that. What they did say was they needed to do revised calculations, which is where we get the 12 point three. Thank you for the meeting. It's good. Oh gosh, it's eight fifteen. Yep, I know you were probably you were like eight o'clock. We're out of here, but I, I just got to head. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. So we adjourn. Second. No. <laughs> All in favor. Bye. Bye. Unanimous. Jim Pope.